What's up y'all? In this video I'm going to be going over how we can make an obstacle avoidance algorithm and we're going to be using the 2D LiDAR that we added to our world in the last episode. That 2D LiDAR is going to act as the input for our obstacle avoidance algorithm. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so like in the last coding episodes, we're going to go ahead and start off by opening up Sublime. Then we're going to go ahead and go to IQGNC source and then make a new CPP file and this file we're going to call uh, avoidance.cpp so go ahead and type that in .cpp boom save okay the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add these lines to the cmake list file so go ahead and copy and paste these right here at the bottom boom now we're, gonna, now we're ready to go ahead and start coding up our avoidance algorithm. Alright, so like the last few programs that we made, this program is also going to be use, utilizing ROS. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our CPP program so that we can use uh, ROS, just like any other ROS program would. So go ahead and copy those lines in and paste them right here. So just as a quick refresher, uh, we're going to include the ROS functions, and then also we're going to be using the GNC functions that I made. And then these two lines here, init ROS, and then the ROS node handle that we'll pass into all our ROS publishers and subscribers. So next thing we're going to do is come down here, and we're going to start adding all the stuff that we need to get the data from our LiDAR. So the first thing is, we're going to be using this ROS message called sensor messages slash laser scan. And we'll go ahead, copy in the include file, and paste it right under here. Boom. And the next thing is we're going to start adding in the subscriber for the LiDAR. So this is going to be called using this line right here. And if you haven't picked up on the pattern already, all of the subscribers have pretty much have exactly the same um, format. So it's going to be call raw subscriber, uh, declare the type of the name of the subscriber, pass in the node handle, uh, type dot subscribe the uh, name of the message that you're using and in this case we're using sensor messages laser scan then this will be the topic of the ROS uh, the ROS topic that we will be subscribing to to get the data from and then finally this number right here represents the buffer in which how many um, messages will pile up in the buffer between um, ROS spins so I like to try to use the latest data and not build too much of a buffer so I always try to keep this at one and then finally the last uh, argument that you put in here is the name of the callback function which we'll be adding next yep so now let's go ahead and grab this callback function and we're gonna leave it empty for now because this is where the logic for our avoidance algorithm is gonna go but before we can do that let's go ahead and add all the code to make the drone take off and start navigating so let's go right back here and if you haven't noticed this is the pretty much the exact same code that we've used in the last few um, tutorials including the waypoints one and um, the search and rescue tutorial as well so go ahead and put this right down here so again we're gonna do a quick little review of what all this code does so init publishers and subscribers gets all the data um, from the FCU, the flight control um, unit, and then wait for connect is basically um, gonna spin, spin and loop right here until uh, we get data from our flight control unit, and then we'll have this function called wait for start, which is basically waiting for the user uh, to set the mode of the drone to guided. Once the mode of the mode it goes to mode guided, then we'll go ahead and initialize a local frame, which is the which is basically specified off of the initial orientation of the drone and this is where all the vectors will be in reference to so it makes it a little bit easier to um, do waypoint missions then next we'll take off and set the destination to the same waypoint as the takeoff and then we'll go into our control loop and just start spinning and taking in data Alright, now let's take a little break and talk about the avoidance algorithm that we're going to be using to control our drone. So let's go back to the follow along and then click on this link to uh, the research paper 
And basically, this research paper right here uh, is about an algorithm that describes uh, an obstacle avoidance uh, behavior that is very similar to two electrons with the same charge. And so if you think of these two electrons, the as they get closer together, they're going to repel each other more and more. And that's exactly what we're going to do with our drone, but instead of having an electron, the other particle is going to be an obstacle. And so the closer we get away from it, the more our drone is going to want to move away from the obstacle. And a good way to visualize this is by looking at these 3D graphs. So the closer you get to it, the higher the repulsion force is going to be. And uh, this isn't like the exact equation, this is the p potential equation. So we're going to do a little finagling to get this to generate us a waypoint. But this is essentially what is going to set the scaling of each obstacle. So now let's go ahead and go back to our program and begin coding this up. Alright, so like I said before, we're going to be coding up this algorithm in the callback function that we coded a little earlier. So let's go ahead and start declaring some variables. So the first thing we're going to need is a variable to hold the message data. And the message is of type sensor messages and then um, laser scan boom and we're going to call this uh, current uh, underscore 2d scan and we're now we're going to go ahead and get all the current data into this variable called current 2d scan by writing current 2d scan equals um, star MSG. Boom. Alright, so the next couple of variables that we're going to need are going to handle the avoidance vector. So let's go ahead and make a couple floats for that and we'll go float avoidance vector underscore x is equal to uh, zero. And we'll also make one for y. Boom. Finally, the last um, variable that we'll need to declare is a bool, and this is going to track whether or not we have found a um, obstacle within our avoidance threshold, and we'll call this bool avoid, and we'll set that equal to false. Boom. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is start parsing all of the data that uh, we just got in our message. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to make a little for loop, and we're going to go for, and then int i is equal to one, and then i is um, less 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 than um, current two D scan dot um, ranges and dot size. So I probably should have mentioned this before, um, but if you're ever curious about how a um, a uh, ROS message looks, you can come to your terminal and run ROS message msg uh, show and then the name of the message. So this one is send sort messages and then laser uh, scan. Boom. So this is the um, uh, the makeup of this message. So you have a header and then uh, some characteristics about the laser scanner and then there is a um, uh, two arrays, one for ranges and one for intensities. And so what we're going to be using is this array of ranges that are float32 and this is how far each um, each range is from or each, each sample is from the sensor. So uh, let's go back to our for loop and basically what we're saying is int i equal to 1 is less than current the current scan dot ranges dot size and then of course increment plus plus and boom. Alright so now we're going to want to go ahead and take a look at each indice of this array of ranges. So let's make a if statement and check if this is going to be less than a certain range. And what we're going to check is uh, we're going to make sure that it's less than um, uh, D0. And this D0 
is going to be uh, a certain number that we specify. And um, what I recommend we do is three meters. So let me first finish typing this. <laughs> this is so uh, confusing saying all this stuff and being behind in typing. So uh, we're going to say it's less than d0 and we're going to declare d0 to be a float and we're going to say this is equal to three. Um, one other variable that we're going to need is this float and we're going to call it k. And this is going to be a gain for how much each um, each um, uh, thing is going to be weighted. Uh, you'll see it later in the program. <laughs> so, perfect. Um, and then we're also going to set a min range. And this min range is usually um, specified by the laser range finder itself. And this, this, this is usually a limitation of the, uh, how close an object can be to the actual range range finder for it to read it and so typically it's like uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.35 meters so let's just go ahead and set that as well so if we get any returns that are less than that we're just gonna go ahead and ignore it so let's do if it's less than D0 and if current uh, 2D scan dot ranges of I is greater than point Three, five. Then we're going to do some logic. All right, boom. <laughs>